Sash here, coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. I'm not alone, joined by YST, one of my favorite content creators for Raid Shadow Legends. YST, what's up, man? Welcome to the channel. How's it going, Ash? It's been a quite a while, right, since I've come on the channel. Maybe it about has. eight months or so. I can't what? recall it, but... Has it been that long, know. dude? Shame on me. Shame on me. Uh, where's the mask, bro? It, 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 oh, the mask. Wait, I'll get it okay. for you. Okay, thank you. There thank we you, go. Thank you, thank Three, you. two, one, boom. Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, guys. Okay, we so go. we have YST. Uh, how you doing, man? How was your New Year? How was your holiday? Uh, it's been great, thank you. I hope you had a great um, New Year's as well with your family. Hope you had a bit of a break. I know you're a bit of a grinder in the YouTube scene. So <laughs> nah, hopefully dude. you got some time to relax and stuff as well. I like it, man. I'm, I'm comfortable yeah. when I'm at work, which is something that is, is good and bad at the same time, right? But it, I, had a great, <laughs> yeah. I had a great holiday. Thanks for asking, man. Uh, yeah. we're gonna, today we're going to do something really fun. We're going to do draft mode as if Plarium comes to us one day and says, Listen, Ash and YST. <laughs> secretly our favorite content creators we want to start a brand new account and we want to give you guys two epic champions from every faction to start out your fresh account on uh awesome awesome sign me up ysd so we're gonna draft though we can't take the same champions so you're gonna go first because you're the guest and then we'll kind of alternate from there and we'll see what kind of champions we decide and see if we can snipe each other's picks or if we have totally different opinions we're gonna do the same thing on yst's channels with legendaries after this video so be sure to check that one out as well guys uh before we get to all that just to get to know you a little bit here yst obviously you're from yep. england right yes uh what do you like to do in your spare time man what do i like to do in my spare time yeah. mainly i like to well nowadays i like to always chill with my kids and yeah. do like the kids stuff and go out to museums and stuff like that but away what from kind that, of museums I'm, you like like children's museums type stuff well, or? i've got i've got one around the corner from my house right and they do like um it's like a national space center but once Ooh. you pay once, you get to get the rest of the year for free. So it's, it's a plus. I just get to keep going there. <laughs> nice. But, the kids are like, Space Center again, Dad? I'm like, I'm like yes. No money coming out of my bank today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Uh, okay. Well, uh, so your kids are into space? Um, yeah. Uh, well, my four-year-old is. My two-year-old is still a bit too young to understand it, but she just likes all the, the spaceships and just looking at it and stuff, yeah. That's cool. That's cool, man. All right, yeah. so today, let's just start with Bannerlords, man. And uh, I, as I said, you're the guest, so you can pick first. Who are you going with Ooh. with your first overall draft choice Epic Champions, Ray Shadow Legends? And we're sticking to... We only allow two champions each, right? That's the game. Two champions so, each. That's the game. And yep. yeah, you're up first. Okay. You can pick anybody, you know? Voids I'm just... I'm just I'm out here to try and ruin Ash's day today <laughs> in the nicest way possible. <laughs> so, so we're going to eliminate Stagnate from the equation. He's now mine. Bruh, uh, bruh. One of the best epic champions in the game, in my personal opinion. It's such a simple but effective kit, right? We've got drop attack, we've got drop defense, and we've got a decrease speed A1, making this one of the viable options out there. For me, like on my personal account, I like to use this in the Iron Twins Fortress. And also um, a very unique passive, right? Where you can increase your accuracy if you get resisted and abuse somebody like a Geomancer by opening up with its A1 ability. And then you can follow in with the next turn and then place the burn because you got resisted and now you've got that extra buff on. So very cool ways that you could use this passive as well. But I just feel like he's such a simple but effective champion in raid. I hate you, YST. You're okay. That's gonna do it for the video. Uh, man, See you later, guys. I think I think that stag. I was hoping you'd go for like Ursula or something like that because I think the Stag Knight is a boss. Yes. Uh, so I'm really bummed out out the gate here, but I agree with you. I think he's the obvious first choice. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Ursula. Uh, oh, there we go. I think she's the maybe the obvious second choice. She has increased attack, increase uh, a decreased attack on the same ability. Nice to have. It's going to cost me about 150 books to get her uh, totally ready to go here, <laughs> but it's yeah. going to be nice to have. I think the best AOE revival uh, out of all epics in the game. She also has increased defense and strength in which she can place without a without the revival on a five turn cooldown, but lasts for three turns. It's mm -hmm. really good. Listen, I didn't get Stagnite, but I think that Ursula is the best AoE reviver again out of all epics. So I think it's a good start to my account. Oh, yeah, she's huge, man. Talk about Hydra Boss, right? Having that free turn duration is actually humongous for players. And if you start to bring in like extended champions, yeah. you can actually extend that to a four turn, practically making this like that one turn where you don't have that up. So it's very consistent. So I'm a huge fan of Ursula, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So Stagnite and who else? Who's your next? All right, so next one, we're going to be choosing Nub Raids. I'm not sure if you know which champion he is, but he's actually Archmage Helmet. That's his logo. Okay. <laughs> so Damn it, man. You're picking all my champions. Uh, I hate going second. You know what? 
I'm just reading your mind. It's 2023. I've got some special powers now. I don't know but... who I'm going to take after this. Crap. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> He's going to end up with Fearmonger, guys. But um, <laughs> this champion is actually very cool, right? Attainable for every player participating in the normal Doom Tower. So you don't have to worry about the hard one. And he's got increased crit rate, increased speed, increased crit damage on a free turn cooldown in one ability, guys. Now talk about a whopper skill for an epic, right? Yeah. Um, also, on that A2 ability, that chance to place a stun if it's critical. And then after attacking, decreases the turn meter if they don't have the stun. Which can be detrimental if you just care about the stuns. But I feel like a 75% chance is still very high for an epic. Like there's not a big amount of champions in this game that are cool. That actually has a 100% chance, right? I think there's only skills. Uh, yeah, I think there's like maybe three or four. Yeah, there's like the, Astralon and stuff yeah, like that. But Goffrey, it's very the rare. Dwarf, so. Whatever his name is. Yeah, there's a few. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. But also, um, A1 ability has a chance of filling his turn meter if it's critical, and he's immune to turn meter effects with a speed aura in arena battles by 17%. So I actually feel like in this game, he should have had an aura for Doom Tower personally because. I understand what he was trying to do in raid. They wanted to have an immune decreased turn meter champion so you don't get affected in the arena. But for me personally, he's turned into a god tier PvE champion. Yeah. And I feel like in a Doom Tower aura, I feel like would have had a lot more use, but I'm not against it for like tag team and stuff. Totally agree with you, Archmage. Yeah. Was, I was very close to him or Ursula. I'm curious, who would you have went with if you had second choice? Would you have went with Archmage um, or Ursula? If I was to get a... <laughs> I think no, no, in my head, I still had Archway Helmet, honestly. Okay, but, okay, okay, yeah. cool. Ah, uh, man, I feel like there's a big drop off, I'm not gonna lie, a after those three champions. <laughs> uh, I would, I do like a a Lady Annabelle, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't go with her. I think I would pl probably play it safe and go with Gizkard the Seguiled. Uh, okay. You're getting an AoE provoke 75% land rate, uh, three turn cooldown, certainly not bad for control in the early, the mid game, especially. He's got a shield on himself, then he has increased defense and increased attack on the same ability on a three turn cooldown. So I know I'm getting my big increased defense, again, my big increased attack, depending on what I need, and uh, what he's a little turn meter fill for for the uh, for the provoke. I think he's a really solid champion and he has that really high landing decrease attack on the A1. So I can actually run him in clan boss as well YST, especially yeah. again, I mean, he bring he's bringing a lot to the table. So I think Gizkar the Sagile is a pretty decent option. Would you have went somewhere else with the fourth choice if you had had it? Um I probably would have went for Actually, do you know what? That's probably a choice I would have went to. If there wasn't okay. those four, I actually probably went over there. Yeah, 100%. Okay, okay. So there we go. Moving on to High Elves. I guess I should go first this time, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. after, after you I'll give it to you. Me, take after it. you embarrass me <laughs> on my channel. Uh, uh, listen, I think that, dude, there's some good choices here. There's some good choices. I'm going to go Royal Guard. I'm going to keep it keep it on the chalk, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Royal Guard can just help you, obviously, everywhere in the, or I should say, mid game, early game, late game. It's going to be perfect for a, a beginning account. Even, obviously, we know his takedown ability is going to be money uh, against Spider helping me out there, against Hydra Clan Boss, against any, basically, dungeon in the game we get decreased defense on the a1 and his hamstring ability is super underrated too especially you know four time at random granted on a four turn cooldown but decreased speed great for bosses and then he always decreased turn meter as well great for waves so i think his kit is actually a lot more versatile than just the enemy max hp takedown big big fan of royal guard yeah, Royal, Royal Guard is one of those champions, like, when I started this game, that was like, when that champion popped out of my Sacred Shard, I was flipping my chair, like, yo, I got Royal <laughs> yeah, Guard today. Yeah, dude, yeah, so same, same. It, it's, but even right now, like, I still use him in the Dark Fae, I use him in particular stuff and Faction Wars, so definitely carries all the way up until the end game, right? 100%. Yep. Alright, who, who are you picking, man? I hope you're not gonna, oh. I, have a, I have a real big favorite here who was really close to Royal Guard. Who you got? Alright, begins with a T, ends with an L, Mr. Tyro. Alright, cool, cool. So, <laughs> it's not Tyro. So, yeah, so Tyro is one of those champions where he just holds that nostalgic value for me, uh, very similar to the Royal Guard. Like, I'm sure you can agree, back then there wasn't like a huge range of champions that had a decreased attack on the A1 ability and brings in the drop defense as well for Clan Boss, having the two most crucial things that we need to take down the Demon Lord. And he has one of the most reliable chances of the decreased attack on the A1 because it is an each hit placement. And then also um, allying defense battles by 25%, making this a very tanky thing for your clan boss teams. So I felt like if I was to choose one and I was thinking about clan boss, I'm straight to Tyrell uh, for this option.
All right, man. I would not have gone with Tyrell. However, okay. I love Tyrell, though. I would have probably picked yeah. him third. But I'm a massive fan of Skaramis, this dude. Oh, really? Have, Wait, have so, you messed okay. around with him? What, what, what? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? So, no, I was going to say, like, I, I, we had test server access, so I could yeah. have had the chance to play with him. But I didn't realize he was that good. So well, enlighten me. I actually want to learn here. <laughs> hey, man. So I have this series yeah. on the channel. What I do that I, I pull random champions from random shards and I build whatever okay. I pull. Right. So I actually accidentally kind of built him in that part of that series. Otherwise, I would not have. First of all, his sword is freaking badass. I mean, look at that sword, mm. man. I mean, take it up the whole screen, dude. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, secondly, so he has a... Uh, 100% chance of stealing uh, the turn meter on the A1, uh, which is important because he has counterattack on himself, right? But we'll get to that in a minute. On his mm -hmm. A2, he has an AoE attack on a three-turn cooldown. Decrease the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. Also places a decreased attack for two turns. Fills his turn meter for 10% for each buff that Ooh. has its duration decreased on the enemy. HP-based champion, easy to keep alive. This effortless superiority, really, really solid ability. On his A3 ability, we have a provoke on everybody guaranteed or 100% on a three turn cooldown with a counter attack and a continuous heal on himself so again he's going back into uh stunning and stealing turn meter all the time off of that a1 ability and then again with a decrease attack and the damage mitigation and more turn meter fill on his a3 and a three turn cooldown this guy's like a sneaky machine when it comes to the synergy between all of his scales both in damage mitigation and control uh certainly not an end end game epic champion yeah uh for me it'll be kind of close between him and like Virgis in terms of a support champion but i really was impressed this dude like the random team that i built yst this dude yeah. carried the team both in damage and in just support and control so i was a big big fan of skaramis He's very interesting. Like the first thing that's reading to my mind when I'm seeing the kit anyway is actually the implementation for Hydra Boss because mm -hmm. being able to reduce the cooldowns or the duration, sorry, and placing the decreased attack AOE, filling the turn meters and actually placing two buffs on himself, enabling him to be um, a mischief tank, right? If you build him in high resistance, yep. Mischief is going to want to snap up him. And if he's got that high resistance on, he's not taking anything. So I feel like he's actually um, maybe for like normal or high, hard Hydra, you can see a great value from this champ. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. And think about it. To your point on Hydra, fills the champion term every 10% for each buff mm. that, that it has its duration decreased. Ooh, Sometimes yeah, against, that can be an extra turn, essentially, almost, you know, against Hydra heads because you're getting, you know, if there's 10 buffs, you're, you're good, you know? Uh, yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, who do you have next? Uh, next up, it's a bit of a hard one. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to go with Andrissia. I'm going to go with Andrissia. Okay, okay. Yeah, I feel like, I like this that. champion is actually very underlooked in the community, especially for Arena, because if you have a look at the pointed justice, um, well, not the pointed justice, the passive, sorry, at the start of each turn, places a 50% ally protection buff for two turns on the ally with the lowest HP and will not be placed on this champion, also places a 25% strength and an increased defense buff on this champion for two turns. So straight out the gate, she's putting those damage mitigations on herself, allowing her to be tanky, to tank up the ally protection hits, but then she's also protecting your Nuka, right? Making it, in a sense, like a budget Necrot. I was going to say, scenarios. a mini Necrot yeah. the Great right there. Yeah, so I feel like if you don't have a Necrot and you're looking for like a go second option to be able to place ally protection on your Nuka, like granted they've got the lowest max HP and you tune it in that way, she actually stands out to be a, a great champion there. Um, also, on the A2 ability, yeah, two one, turn. Of, one of the champions that has a two turn duration on a stun, and that's pretty rare, right? And being able to lock off somebody else if you have high accuracy, actually starts to become very useful if you like lock out a duchess or something hypothetically so yeah loads of possibilities with this champion and i feel like she's uh definitely worth the list for me you know what i would love to see on her as a first of all i love her as well and i think it's a great yeah. call out i would love to see and i'm not sure if i'm asking too much from a void epic champion but one of those maybe additions to the passive where every god like every five points of resistance gets one point of accuracy or something because she's an awkward champion to build with accuracy given her utility as a massive necrot tank right uh so yeah. it would be cool if it made it a little bit easier to build her with some resist or something like that uh without having to just maximize accuracy for the stun but either oh, yeah, way 100 Either way, I love that. I love the call out there on Andrisia. I agree. Well, guys, if you do want to use that champion, um, options could be somebody like a Yoshi the Drunkard who was a past fusion with the increased accuracy, right? Um, True. Those kind of synergies could work. But obviously, in the early game, if you're kind of coming up and you pull Andrisia, she's actually a very solid tank, I guess. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, good call out. I kind of want to use her on a go second team now. I don't think I've done that. <laughs> uh, all right, Sacred Or, we have a lot of champions in Europe first, man. All right, so this one, I'm taking it, okay? okay. Go TK Neri, give it to me. No! Come to I me. I thought you'd go with Deke, bro. All right, oh, all right. no, no. Okay, so, all right. All Deke, right. Deke Armstrong's up there, and I'm pretty sure that's probably going to come up next if Ash chooses it. Yeah, well, but, it wouldn't have been It would have been Godseeker, though. I think Godseeker is, is way, way, way S tier, yeah. God tier. Anyway, go on. Um, I probably put her up there probably top three epics in the entire game. Any three. affinity, I don't care. I think she's amazing. Now, it comes down to the Rise of Glory. One of those revive abilities that can actually reduce all of your cooldowns. And this makes it so, so strong in this game. Like, imagine one of your champions dies. You pull them straight back up in, like, the Hydra boss or Arena or the Sand Devils Necropolis, right? And then, boom, you can just come through straight back in, place your burns of a Geomancer or whatever yeah. that may be. Um, also, Guardian Angel, preempting those hits, right? Making sure that you can get those revive and deaths on and stop your champions from dying. We've got an AoE heal for the clan boss or anywhere else in this game and increasing the duration of our buffs to keep all of our buffs up on our champions. And we've got heals on their kit, revives. Like, talk about such a universal champion that can be used almost anywhere in this game and worth everything that you invest into her, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah. she's probably the second epic champion I would choose in the entire game. I think she is yeah. amazing. I'm not going to tell you number one because I don't want you to snipe me, man, but I think you know probably who it is. <laughs> I'm uh, coming for you. <laughs> I think Godseeker is insanely good. To your point, like I use her on a team with Geo on uh, Iron Twins. And Geo okay. just is supposed to die just to reset his abilities off of the revival. It's a beautiful thing. And her kit is just amazing. And Hydra and Sand Devil, to your point, anything they add to the game, I feel like she even gets better and better, you know? Uh, yeah. Ha, man. There's so All many right. picks here in this faction, man. <laughs> I know, I know. But it's Godseeker to me. I guess, you know what? Since you went with Stagnite, I don't have a good yeah. debuffer yet. So I'm going to go with Deke, right? And mm -hmm. he's still, an, uh, I think he's a definitely a top 10 epic champion in the game. Uh, he's got the uh, the turn meter over here with the extra turn, which is so nice to have. Three turn cooldown with the extra turn. It's like a mini Lissandra Energize ability on time compression. And then the sweeping retribution. It's just a simple AoE, 100% land rate on the decreased defense to provide the affinity on a three turn cooldown. But basically the extra turn makes it a two turn cooldown essentially. Yeah. And then he brings the leech. Then he brings speed in all battles as well. Just a really, really solid debuffer. Probably my second favorite epic debuffer in the game after Stagnite. Congratulations. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Deacon Armstrong is cool, man. Talk about clan boss, right? Demi for teams. Yeah. Like, really opening opportunities for players like Tag Team Arena, Classic Arena. He's just such a great champion if you don't have those tell me a decrease effects in your account. So, so true. All right. Who you got, yeah. man? Man, you kind of put me in a hard spot here. Um, who would I choose? Who would I choose? Raids come to me, like with Genzin, and he's banging on my door, like, why is he choose a champion here? Uh, damn, no I'm trying pressure. to put myself in no some pressure. I'm, I'm putting myself in some situations so I can really choose. Uh, oh man. It's gonna be Mordecai. Ooh, yeah, okay. It'll be Mordecai. So you got your burner. You got your burner. Yeah, we've got to get the burner in there, right? Talk about spider progression. Talk about stage 25. I just feel like because he places the burns, it holds such a strong value in this game because you do not have to worry about the affinities of the bosses that you're facing. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for a burner, look no further than somebody like a Mordecai, right? Um, also, placing the increased attack, right? Really, really strong. Amplifying the damage of your attack-based champions. We've got turn meter crease effects on the A2 and also an A1 as well to reduce a more turn meter. So for an epic champion, definitely makes my list and probably would be my second choice there. Okay, fair enough. I cannot fault you on that one yep. at all. I think I would go with... Juliana, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's between, I'll tell you it's between. It's between Canoness, Sanguinea, uh, Inquisitor, and Cardinal, and Phoenix. Those would be like my five. And out of those, I think I'm going to go with... I think I'm actually going to go with a curveball and go with Cardinal, just so okay. I know that I can have a really cool arena strategy out the gate no matter what, and go yep. with the redemption ability. I'm actually not a user. She's not in any of my tag team teams. I don't use her on a daily basis, Cardinal, but I do go up against her enough to know she can be really annoying in the arena, and I think she's just like a really solid, if I don't get other good arena champions, I know I'll have a solid strategy basically with whatever I throw around her with the redemption ability if I can farm some stone skins. So uh, for that yeah. reason alone, I think I'll go Cardinal there, getting a little bit cute with my answer, but you know, it was a tough one. 
she was actually the key that like, guys for anybody that's actually struggling with the sacred order faction wars um cardinal was actually the reason why i could freestyle with food because what i did was i had like one decently built champion alongside the cardinal and then boom when you come up against the boss time that revive get yourself that free star and you'll be good to go but also you was on anchor right there one i was just gonna champions. i was just gonna say i, I forgot to mention yeah. him too he's very close as well yeah i Would love you anchor, right? him? he was actually in my clan boss team for a long time yeah Okay. This is a great substitute for somebody. If you don't have a God Seeker or a Sandlash Survivor, I feel like he's the next best option because he yep. increases the duration of those buffs. Yep. So very uh, strong candidate there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, can't change my answer now. I'm stuck. All right, <laughs> Barbarians. I'm up first. I'm going to go with... Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, I don't even know. Don't know. Okay, wait wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, I got it down to... Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Wow, there's no... For me... I'm, I'm assuming you disagree, but there's no like absolutely no brainer here. I'm going to go. I disagree. I okay. actually disagree. Yeah. Damn, son. Yeah. I'm going to go with Fat Man. Uh, okay. So you obviously are going to go with, I wonder who it is. You think it's, is it Sky Touch? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so the burn, the poison, the ally attack, I could run, run him in some sort of a weird blender with a cardinal if I wanted to. Uh, yeah. He's got a decreased defense. He could be great in my clan boss team uh, with the burn and the poison and the great, I think he's my best, the, the, my favorite, I should say, ally attacker out of all epic champions in the game. So welcome to the team, Ferric and the Fat. Who are you going to go with? I'm curious. <laughs> it's not high because we're gonna get no, it for no, wait, free wait. in 30 before, days before we even yeah. carry on that was like the best explanation of a champion i've ever heard that was just... <laughs> I, I well think... we're running uh. 20 minutes here three factions <laughs> in so i'm trying to pick up the pace my brother yeah. uh all hey, right what, what, so, wait, all right what, okay go it's on. not gonna be high katoon because she, she's a 30 day reward so you're not gonna do, take that so yeah. i'm guessing your girl is sky touch but i could yeah. control okay okay, it is. okay. Sky touch all, right. Mean, yeah. all right all right um all right so guys for anybody that doesn't know how this works right with the bloodstain ritual on the a free ability or should i say the passive damages this champion by 10 percent of their max hp at the start of each turn now you really need to pay close attention to the full stop because raid always like to um word this stuff very weird yes and then she will then heal all allies except this champion equal to half of the champion's current lost hp now the way that this reads is you're gonna get a five percent heal from that ten percent of the damage taken which in fact isn't how it works how it works is it will be a heal based on your current lost hp so if hypothetically you've got 100k hp She's now on 50,000. You're now going to see a 25,000 heal by simply Sky Touch just taking a turn, guys. Now talk about Iron Twins Fortress being able to stay alive all of the time. Talk about Bommel with the Revive on Deaths on her A2 ability. Talk about countering Torments in like a... Um, what's that set called? The Immunity set. Yep. Um, you can quickly come through and strip everything off. Such an amazing champion for this game. And I love her. 100%. <laughs> One of my favorite epics. Yeah. Okay, I love it. And, and Sand Devil, too, you didn't even mention. Obviously, a fantastic yep. champion with the Revive on Death. Really one of the only options out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Reliables and Epics, there's not that many. So totally agree with you. I love uh, Sky Touch as well. I will go with... Uh, uh, I think my next <laughs> choice will be... I don't know. I might go with uh, Hoskaro. Oh, uh, he stole it from me. Yeah, he's got the he's got the AOE <laughs> stun defense base against yeah. seventy five percent. You have my man Archmage, very similar uh, ability to Archmage on his A two yeah. turn meter under stun fifteen percent on his A three ability. He's one of the three champions in the game with increased resistance. Granted, the small version, but that's it. It's him and uh, Rafmatab and what's his face, the dwarf. Uh, yeah. What is his name again? Wait, wait, which dwarf are you talking about? Gothrid? The no, the the dwarf with the increased resistance. The uh, oh, Borgar, the, um, Borgar, Borgar. Yeah, Borgar, yeah. yeah. So this dude's a, a uh, you know, a, an epic. He's got the remove stun, the increased defense, increased resist. Nice to have. Four turn cooldown. And then he's immune to stun himself. He's kind of like an anti-stun stunner, right? Yeah. Uh, increase the damage inflicted by all allies. 15% when attacking enemies under stun. Then, of course, he has a stun on the A1 as well. He's defense-based, so he's easy to keep alive. Just a really good control champion. Can deal a little bit of damage, and he has some nice buffs. So they bring it to the table as well. You know right. what? I'm gonna I'm getting my Tim Four on for you right now. Okay. Now I've got a theory. Okay. Okay. And you can kind of counter this if you don't agree with it. Right. I strongly I strongly believe the next Hydra Head is gonna be a stun mechanic, right? Okay. And we had we had what's his name? Rorik Wormbane, who has a very similar kit to Hoskaru. Yeah. Then we got another fusion in Hoskaru, who actually places the stuns in very similar ways, and they're both immune to stun with their passives. Mm. Now, what I strongly believe is we're gonna have to lock out the new Hydra Head using stun mechanics on the A1 skill, which Hoskaru does provide 
and also on the AOE, and he's immune to them, and he strips them off your champions. So I feel like somebody like Hoskrew could potentially in the future be something that we're going to see. Because right now we see, we got provokes, right? We get provoked, you can give provokes on the head of Decay. But there could be a potential for the new Hydra head to have a stun mechanic. But that's just me thinking out the box. But yeah. I think you, I think you're onto something here, man. Honestly, yeah. it might not even, maybe it's not even a Hydra head. Maybe it's just a new boss. But you're right. Yep. There it is. It makes sense because why would they bring in two fusions that do exactly the same things in the same faction? Yeah, and they're both immune to stuns. Like there's nowhere else in this game that I can recall, apart from the clan boss for like the stun single target, that you really care about being immune to stun, right? Which you yeah. can just strip off. So I feel like there is going to be a source of this in the game in the future. Totally agree. That's a really, really good heads up. Uh, giving two ch or giving Rorik a use in this game for for Christ's sake. Jeez, man. All right, <laughs> who you got next, man? Um, all right, so there's not really much of champions here that I would no. really choose over anyone else. So I'm going to go with somebody like Haikatoon, attainable for all players. But and you I get feel her like... for 30 days anyway. You get her for free, bro. You're going to go well, how about? Her? I don't want to wait 30 days. Okay, I'm going to get okay. her on day one. Uh, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough, man. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. All so, right. Yeah, so Haikatoon is just one of those champions where I feel like you've got turn meter uh, with the decreasing turn meter, sorry, on the A3. We're filling the turn meters. We've got the increased speed. We've got the decreased speed. And we got the ally speed in all battles. And I just feel like she's a speed demon. You bring her into so many places and she's going to bring you value. So I would definitely choose her over the other champions in this faction. Yeah. Here. I think, it, yeah. is there anybody even close in contention? I think I would, I, maybe Wood painted for healer. I can't Since believe I'm the saying buff, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alik is a good nuker. But other than that, man, there's not a well, lot. Well, there is, there's somebody like a Sawai firstborn for clan boss, right? We yep. got decreased attacks. We got yep. the weakens and stuff. But I would have still went with a high cartoon over someone like that. Fair enough, man. Ogren Tribe. I forgot who's going. Are you going first? Yeah, you're going first. Yeah, um, I'm oh, just going to go no. straight in. Uh, oh. Ugo. Okay, Ugo. okay, okay. I don't feel, man, I feel like you're crushing me here, dude. You're crushing my <laughs> team here. Uh, okay, go ahead. I'm just going to cry in the corner. <laughs> oh, God. So, Why do you so love got... Ugo, IST? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's funny. Every single time I talk about Ugo, I remember our old collab where I said, uh, I kept calling it a uh, he. And then it's actually a yeah, sheep. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. It's okay. but drop the we got drop the fence. We've got Blood Bust, one of the best Hydra champions in the game. We got a heal and cleanse on the A3 ability with the Ugo's brew. We've got a nice leech on the A1 to allow you to heal by 18% of the damage inflicted, which can scale off Warmaster procs. And a funky little passive if she's the last one alive to bring everybody back and put you straight back into the fight. So those are the key points why yep. I love Ugo. I love Ugo too, man. So let me get this. <laughs> we'll do a quick recap before we jump into. Yeah. Uh, this is a tough one. I actually let me let me. I'm gonna do some quick math here. So Ogren, you go first. I go first. 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 You go first. I was seeing if I could get Demitha if I didn't go man eater. <laughs> all right all right now that that is i'm sure my viewers are very uh enthralled by my because now i feel this is tough man you, you going first in ogren is a, is a no, massive wait. i don't think this is that tough i think there's an obvious choice for your channel okay and I don't well, know why I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell go you on. i'm gonna i'll be real though. I'll, I'll walk you through i mean yeah. to me you have to go with skull crusher because he's the only epic in the game with counterattack, right so if i want a chance to counterattack. I need Skull Crusher, right? But mm -hmm. I think Man Eater, you just need to go Man Eater because you need the unkillables. You need it. But I'm actually going to go Skull Crusher. I'm going to go okay. Skull Crusher because I want the Ally Protect. I think he's just a really, really robust, underrated champion. Obviously, bringing Ally Protect and Counterattack on the same ability. Still only three champions. I think there's only going to be three champions until the end of Raid that have Counterattack. Counter you can compare Ally Attack and Counterattack, but Counterattack is is better it's it's no match for me uh so i'm going to skull crusher who do you think mm -hmm. i was gonna go with i'm gonna actually choose it just so everyone on your channel bashes you in the comments okay <laughs> no sea talk okay oh, you're gonna take you sea talk <laughs> just Bro. because you love sea talk i'm gonna I take love sea talk but i'm not crazy man now i get man you know eater what? and i okay. actually i saved a video for us to do where i pulled like a six star soul for him <laughs> uh, and i've been saving that soul for the future so maybe one day we can do that in the future Yo, what up man but all right Sea Talk is a beast of a champion. Look at how big he is on the screen, what? man. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it's not just because you like him or anything like that. I actually built him because you liked him. Don't get me okay. wrong. Yep. But he's actually turned out to be a champion that I love to use in this game, whether that be yep. secret rooms, whether that be faction wars. He clears up so much stuff for me. He's a beast. And I feel he's so underrated in terms of the drop defense, the increased attack, the increased crit rate, crit damage. The E1 as well for the decrease speed, or the term decrease. decrease, sorry. Yep. He actually smacks so much harder than I expected, like, really. So, yep, 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 yep. 
I'm a big fan of him and I'm actually going to choose him. I actually okay. would choose him. I love yeah. it. I love it, man. I love it. Actually, dude, obviously you're right. I love Siege Hulk because he is, God, he's one of the best epic damage dealers out there, right? Uh, yeah. However, I'm happy that you went with him because, dude, I already have, <laughs> yeah, I already have my man, uh, what's his face? Uh, Deke. So I have my debuffer on my squad. Uh, mm -hmm. I love Claude, but I'm going to go with Maneater, like I said. I'm not going to overthink yeah. this one. Uh, I think that just having an unkillable champion is a great start to any account. Not to mention he brings a very, very incredibly valuable decrease attack on the A1, provided as critical on everybody. And then the Siphon, basically fully depleting targets, turn meter, fill, sealing it, essentially, close to, on a three-turn cooldown. Very, very powerful ability. So I can use this guy anywhere, uh, even beyond just unkillable teams. So I think that Maneater is a very, very welcome addition to my squad. Uh, who you got next? Um, so oh, your next one. Uh, do you actually want to see? You already picked two. You already picked two. Oh wait, you already Don't picked two. You got Ugo and Seashog. <laughs> who would you go next? I would go Eurogrim. Who do you go next? Uh, if I, if I was to go on to another champion, it would be a Eurogrim as well. Okay. But my second one would have been a Skull Crusher, but obviously you chose that. So. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right, Lizard Men time. I'm up first, and again, I feel like I'm up first when it's always like, meh. There's no <laughs> obvious, you know, like meh. Yeah. All right, bro. All right. I'm going to go with. <laughs> Damn, man. There's some like really good champions, but I think that they're all real. Like all of them are in the same class. So with that being said, I think I'll go with Venomage. Uh, okay. Having the uh, instant activation of poisons on the A1 going to be really, really great for clan boss. The D boss really, really great for clan boss. Can use them against other places as well, like Nether Spider and stuff like that. Uh, or it's a her, right? My bad. I'm, I'm doing the same thing that you did with Ugo. <laughs> Can use her in those areas. Uh, and then we have the uh, the poisons that he's bringing to the table. She's bringing to the table on the A3. And then the damage mitigation from the heal reduction is very, very useful and helpful. And I think an underrated part of the kit. It gives us a reason to have heal reduction specifically on the clan boss. So Venomage will be a welcome addition to a few of my teams, specifically clan boss. Yeah, 100%. I agree. I use Venomage quite a lot, honestly. Even in my yep. Poison Explosion team, I pair it with my Dark Hail because they both um, instantly detonate on the down. A1. Yep. So it actually turns out to be really cool over like a Bad Elk as I in my team. So Love yeah. that. Love that. Who are you, who but, you going um, with? So you would have went Venomage too first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> who are you going to go so, with? Uh, uh, it's going to be Aox to remember. Okay. Cool. So Aox is a really strong champion. I feel like it was a Steel Skull V2 in this game. Mm -hmm. And... Basically, it comes down to the decreased attack just being able to place, meaning that you cannot get weak hits with this. You can just go into any affinity on the clan boss, you'll be able to place that decreased attack. Um, also, decreased crit rate, um, mitigating some of the bosses like Iron Twins or clan boss for the bad crits. But of course, you have to decrease the target's turn meter, or they have to have less than 50% turn meter, sorry, so it doesn't work on the clan boss. But in bosses that you can manipulate turn meter, you can use it. Uh, on the Steward of Time, it increases the duration of two random debuffs on an attacker by one turn when attacked. So very similar to like a Bulwark and stuff like that. Um, also, a substantial heal that can get an extra value for each debuff on the target. So if you've got 10 debuffs up, that's a 25% heal, which is substantial. Mm -hmm. And then an A1 poison as well. So, yeah. Hard to, hard to argue with you there. Aox is one of the rare, well, one of the ra random epic champions that I've never actually uh, used uh, before. Even though I hear amazing really? things. I hear amazing things. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of Broadmaw, but I th I'm just going to wait and fuse Broadmaw. I think after okay. the buff, he's super, super underrated. The two revival, the increased speed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm actually going to go with Skathix. Uh, Skathix, really, really solid champion. Decreased speed on the A1, similar to Stagnite, 50% land rate, really good against bosses. AoE steal, random buff from each enemy, great against like Hydra. Uh, Scale of the Age is great against Hydra as well. We get the cleanse, block debuffs, and a shield for two turns. It's on a four turn cooldown, but a two turn uh, block debuffs on an epic champion is really, really good. And then we have block damage uh, when their HP drops with 30% to help keep him alive. Obviously, great as well for Iron Twins. Just a really, really, really good champion. Uh, Help me out basically everywhere. Yeah, thanks for stealing my second choice, by the way. No problem, brother. <laughs> I saw it on I'll... your face. I saw the look. Uh... Like, ah. All right, who you got, man? It's going to be a Jarek. Okay, I haven't really got that, much of an option here. That would have been mine too. That would have been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so basically yeah. Um, enabling those four to three ratio teams with the A2 because it's on a four turn cooldown for the increased defense and ally protection, which is strong for the clan boss. But, but the you only do have Godseeker. Of... You do have Godseeker to extend that. Uh, yeah, I guess so. We do, we do. Um, the only downside of him is the base speed. I feel like it's very hard to get to those ratios uh, with a base 96. But yep. apart from that, it's substantial. But A1, decreased attack, right? Very consistent. So... 
Yeah. yeah. I, I, obviously, obviously the, even the passive, it really does help out in places like the Eternal Dragon, let's just say, with the way that the passive scales. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for like a passive healer kind of team where everybody like... Um, like Godzilla Canaries and Vras, like all into one comp can really work out cool. So, okay, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Skinwalkers, you're up first on this one, man. Oof, man. I know. Um, this uh, is ow. Yeah, this yeah. one's kind of hurting for Epics, huh? Yeah, I feel sorry for Rain Beast when he got nerfed. I know, right? Um, that was way back in the day, man. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for Fane. I'll go okay. for Fane. I would go fan yeah. too first. Yeah. yeah, I think for clan boss, I love the clan boss placing the poisons, the drop defense, the weaken. It's just something that you can't really pass up on for an epic champion, right? Especially Agreed. at the high values that you have um, on this champion. Actually, looks really cool as well. So, yep, totally agree with you on Fane. That would be my first choice as well. I will go with, uh, well, <laughs> I kind of want to go Basher. I think I will. Uh, Basher's a little bit of a niche champion, but it'd be nice to go into an account with, like, a mini Warlord. Uh, I could use the, uh, increase the cooldown of all target skills by two turns on a three-turn cooldown, open up in the arena with this, try to build him as fast as I can. I don't love the, the, the speed at 95, but, you know, we'll, we'll make do with it. And then bring block buffs on a four-time at random isn't the best in the world, but I guess I could use him, maybe an early game Hydra for that. Uh, having the weekend on the A1 isn't that bad either, but really it's his A2 ability, Stinging Blast. So I'm gonna go Basher. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I think uh, Bash is very, very cool. But do you know what? After three years, I still don't have one. It's crazy. Oh, really? No Yeah, way. I don't know why. He's just, oh my I think God. he's one of the only Void Epics I don't have. He just doesn't pop out. Okay, who are you going to go with here? I'm curious because it's between oh. like three here for me if I was going to... I'm just thinking of the other champions that I picked from the other factions. I don't want to have similar kits. I think I would go with somebody like uh, Horferis. Okay, that's good. That's a good. Yeah, I, I was I, thinking about the same thing. He looks so cool. He looks like he's come straight out of an animation movie. I love he it. He does. He does. <laughs> but um, A1, we've got the stuns. We've also got one of the only revives in this, um, what's it called? This faction, right? Yeah. With the Skinwalkers. So two random allies of 50% HP and turn meter. And places of strength after the revival is actually very strong. Um, the resisted all battles by 40. And I just think he's a pretty solid um, support champion, right? Can't yeah. go wrong with a champion like this. Totally agree. Increased attack, increased crit rate is a nice, uh, you know, tandem Addition, to have yeah. with that revive. So I totally agree with you. Uh, I would have went horror fees as well. Uh, now that I don't have him to go with, it's funny, man. But like, I hate to be a hater, and people sometimes people give me crap about this in the comments. But I think the steel skull has really fell fallen off big time. No, you know? don't. Do you know what Deadwood's gonna come for you because he loves steel? Dude, skull. I know. <laughs> it's not that he's listen. It's not that he's trash. Yeah, but it's just like I understand what you mean. A four yeah. turn increased defense and and a single target cleanse isn't what it used to be. You know. Uh, with all that said, though, I still might end up picking him because it's really slim pickings here. Yeah, you know, it's like maybe Taurus, maybe Flesh Terror, maybe Earth and Ironhide, <laughs> but I think. As much as I don't really like him, I think I'm still going to go Steel Skull. Uh, again, a little bit of damage, a good support champion still, have that cleanse and a nice heal on the A2 and increased defense with an AoE heal. Could do a lot worse, and, and he's really fast too, 111 base speed, good stats. So uh, yeah, I'll go with uh, Steel Skull. If anybody over at Raid is happening to watch this video, please, on this champion, give him a full out cleanse on the A2, right? Yep. And then give him a free turn cooldown on the A3. And I think you'll see a lot of steel skull. <laughs> Me too, bro. I think give yeah. him either or and you're looking really, you know, like I think he needs a buff though, man. He's a really good champion. But Urigrim yeah. really puts him to shame in a lot of ways. Anyway, who you got? <laughs> uh, that was all of mine for that one, right? Uh, oh, yeah, it is, right? Yeah. You went, who, uh, <laughs> who'd you go with again? You went with Fane and who? Oh, or, Fane or and Horfies. Horfies. Okay, okay. Yeah. Orc time. All right. I all finally right. have first pick on a, on a good one here. I'm going to go with who? Okay, this is actually this is actually kind of difficult because there's a lot of good ones here. Uh, yeah. But it's weird because Seer is obviously going to help me tremendously, but not really so much in the early game, I don't feel like, you know. But I'm still going to take her. I'm going to take yeah. Seer first. Uh, just because of Karma Burn, I feel like I could sit here and read the entire skill, but most people probably knows what it does, but it's the best, you know, Wave clearing ability, damage dealing ability in PVE in the game still. Uh, right up there with, like I guess, poison combust combos. So I'm going to go Seer. Yeah, that's a strong pick. It actually took me years to get one. Finally got one. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go for Old Hermit Jork for my pick. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I think, 
I think Old Hermit Jorg is so undervalued from I, this community, it's insane. Now guys, think about Arbiter, right? You don't have an Arbiter yet, you've come into this game, you want somebody like an Arbiter. Old Hermit Jorg really can fulfill that role with the Heroes of Old because you're placing the increased attack and you're filling the turn meters by 20%. And it's, it's not to the capabilities of an Arbiter, but it's pretty damn close, right? And I feel like if you've got another Speed Aura Champion um, on, your, on your account, maybe, whether that be a 20% or like a Gore Grab or something and you're progressing, this is actually a very strong champion to throw into the mix. And his base stats aren't terrible at 104 speed, right? So I feel like if you're just trying to enable that turn meter role, I feel like Old Homer Jorg is cool. And he's got the revive. Two random allies. Yep. Like, he's a beast, man. Yeah. Now you got two, two you got two, two random ally revivers on your squad, YST. You're ready, you're good to go. Now you it's can so revive good. a whole team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good for Hydra Boss now. I'm reviving yeah, yeah. everyone. Yeah, you can put God Seeker in there. You got all the revivers, man. Now, yeah. uh, I like Old Hermit Jorg. I wouldn't have gone with yeah. him second, though. I okay. I am such a massive fan. This is probably gonna surprise you too, of Tagore. Tagore! Tagore, do, really? Do you know okay. about Tagore? Do you know? I know about him. I've not played with him yet, though. Okay, this guy is a beast, bro. He's got okay. he's a speedy dude, 105, right? He's got a decrease increased defense on the on the ally with lowest HP on his A1. Not bad for an A1, right? Then he's got an AoE, increased speed on everybody on a three-turn cooldown, and then mm. a heal, 15% of his max HP. Okay. And then he's got the AoE revive, baby, on a five turn. Eat that, old Hermit Jorg. Uh, oh. oh, what have I done? <laughs> I just look silly now. <laughs> it's okay, bro. It's okay. He's brand new. He's new. He's new. And yeah. I feel like he went super under the radar, bro. Uh, like No one talks about this dude. You but know I, what? I, I, did, I did say I remember now. Like I was, I was doing a video for the test server, and I remember talking about this guy as being a beast, and yes. I just didn't revisit him, and I forgot he existed. Dude, honestly. I did a video on him, and no one really cared because <laughs> I don't know what it is about him. Like, the name kind of <laughs> sucks. The visuals are all right. But look at this passive, yeah. too, man. Uh, decreases the damage all allies receive by with 50% or, or less by 10%. Like, flat Ooh. out. That's no a real... Cooldowns. Nothing. It's a real... Ouch. And Ouch. HP in all battles, 25% aura, bro. Like, this guy this... is a boss of a champion. If there's one thing that I want people to take away, don't sleep on Tagore, man. He's a beast. That's so that, crazy. I actually it? forgot he was that valuable. Like, yeah. Uh, the well, obviously, speed? the down, the down, the thing is, guys. Like, let us know how many of you actually pulled this champion in the comments because obviously it's pretty new, right? Yes. How many yes. reviews are there? Seventy. Seventy-four. So, he, so what's the? So look, look yeah, at that. They're man. good, but they're not like. Yeah. They're I think he's. Yeah. I think he's like amazing. Like again, increased defense A one, increased speed on everybody, heal on everybody, AOE revival, shield damage mitigation, HP all battles. Wow, that's a really kit, a good kit. I'll shut up a little bit about Tagore, but I'm glad I got him. <laughs> I'm glad I got him. Who you got? Um, I'm gonna go with. I'm just thinking I've got an extender and I love Sandlashed. I love ah, Sandlashed. I thought you were going to go with her. Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do. I don't think I, I will. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for... You don't have many Vra damage dealers. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I I'm going to go with Rask. I'm still going to go with Rask. We both passed over Duck the Pierce too, but we have a lot of debuffers already. All right. Yeah. Uh, Vrask. Rask. Wow, okay. Um, I feel like the cannibalism passive is like such a strong ability for an epic champion. And heals all allies by 10% of this champion's max HP, key being this champion, not there. Uh, whenever this champion inflicts a critical hit. So put 100% crit rate on this dude, you're going to be healing every single time that you're smacking down a boss, you're smacking down enemy waves. And if you talk about like Eternal Dragon and stuff like that, you start to see a great value of a Vras when you pair with like a Doom Priest. So I love passive healers, and if you can get a full out value without needing to book a champion, then I start to see a great return on this. Uh, even that dungeon aura, look at that, thirty three percent. Very it's strong. neutral. Yeah, very strong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hard to argue with you there. A lot of good orcs. I felt really. I felt like you were crushing me so far, but I actually feel like with the seer <laughs> and Tagore, I feel a lot better about my account. Not gonna lie. Uh, all right. Next up is Demon Spawn. Who you going with? You're up first. Okay, you said I'm, I'm gonna need some damage now. I'm gonna need some damage. <laughs> uh, don't just do give me Magna. Don't, don't, no! give, give, give me Magna. <laughs> Back off so, my Magna, bro. It's hard because like there's other champions that I know you're gonna choose now, but it's okay. I need some damage here, otherwise I'm getting smacked like a wet noodle. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So AOE ability, one well, of you the have best. Hulk, bro. You got Siege Hulk. I got Siege Hulk, but he's not a Magna, right? Yeah. 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 True. True. <laughs> so uh, percussive pound, making him one of the best epic champions in, in the game in terms of damage, and with him being HP based, obviously he's very very tanky, right? But places that extra hit um, on the ability there. And also drop defense on the A1 and the debuff spread effects on the A3. 
And also a pretty cool passive as well when he heals, according to the HP burns, which I did use in Hydra at some point. So, yeah, I love this dude. Can't argue with you there. I would have also don't. went Magnar. I, uh... just, just don't take this next champion. I know it's coming. Well, it's between two, honestly. I'm not sure who, what one. I, I'm imagining one of them is yours. But for me, it's between, well, I can't say who. But I think I'm just going to go with a safe bet here and go Allure. Uh, uh, yeah, God's sake. I mean, <laughs> you gotta go Allure because she really has a something that most legendaries don't have, right? And that's an, an amazing control ability. One of the game's best, if not the game's best, on her A1. Good for any single boss in the game that's susceptible to the control meter, you know, depletion. Uh, Dark Fae, Fire Knight, go on and on, right? So, uh, just for this ability alone, I'm going with Allure. What have you done to me, man? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but there's still some good choices. You still got some good some, choices. There's some really yeah. good choices, but I, I was relying on that champion there for my squad. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Skimfoss. Okay, dude. Didn't you put out a guide on this guy somewhat recently? Yeah. All right. I put it for a stage 120 of the Dark Fae. Okay. And if you don't if you don't have an Allure, this is the next best thing, honestly, from this faction. Because I feel like he's got such an underrated clutch of woe with the A3. Because he's one of the only epic champions that can steal 100% of the target's turn meter. So it's not a depletion, right? It's like a Grohawk the Bloodied vibe. Where yeah. you can go through, steal the turn meter, get another turn in. Effectively making this a two-turn cooldown against those bosses. And I feel like that's so strong in this game. Also, on the Dark Fae, doing that AoE ability to take out yourself before with the mirror copies. And it actually hits pretty hard with the decrease attack as well. And the A1 decrease speed on a two-time hitter. Like, talk about an amazing champion for Fire Knight and Dark Fae, right? So, so I feel like true. if you don't have an Allure, you're looking for a champion like Skimfoss. And he's Void. Take him into any of the affinities. You're good to go. I love that pick, man. Love that pick. I thought yeah. only I love Skimfos, but I remember you oh, did no, a video I, on him now. Uh, yeah. Darn it. All right. I'm going <laughs> to go with... For me, it's between uh, Umbral and Achak for my last choice here. Okay. Uh, and I think I'm going to go... I, since I already have Basher uh, for the arena, I think the smart choice is go with Achak the Wenderin. Uh, oh. really good support champion. I actually lean heavily on this girl or guy. I don't know which one. Uh, dude, I think it's a dude, right? It's, I think it's a chick. The, the way she's oh, like, chick? Hover, she's hovering around like a duchess. What is, does he, <laughs> does he even have a face? It, it doesn't, apparently. I don't see any eyeballs or anything, man. Anyway. It's just teeth. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Well, with a block, you get block debuffs, you get a strength in, four turn cooldown, AoE freeze, uh, HP burn defense higher than attack. Great for spider, obviously. Three turn cooldown with this amazing Twisted Hunger. Twisted Hunger can help you out tremendously on spider. Attract the Wender, I'm sure you know. And Mordecai, if I could, maybe we could trade later on. Uh, but they can like oh, no, solo. No. They can duo <laughs> like spider yeah. uh, 25. It, it's just really amazing stuff. Has defense and all back battles as well so i feel like given my champion so far at check the wonder and fits really nicely for some support uh, uh yeah i think we have we have to just quickly mention um, yeah. i think just uh, just because yes. it's one of the best champions for hydra i know and has a free ter free turn duration on the block buffs so even if you don't want to provoke if head of decay isn't there which can actually put you on cooldowns yeah um Obviously, you could just abuse the emulate on a free turn in like a relentless set, and uh, Hydra's never gonna get a buff, right? Never gonna get a buff. Yeah, I. You're right. It's tough to yeah. pass up Umbral, it's, it's hard, but yeah. if I didn't have Basher, I would go Umbral. All right, next yeah, up. Hundred uh, percent. Wait, have no, you got? Have you got first here? No, wait. Uh, yeah, you, do. you do. I do. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, okay, so some, I'm not. There's some good ones here. Woo! There are some really <laughs> good ones, man. Real good ones. Shoot. All right. Here's the thing. In a vacuum, well, I'm not going to tell you who. In a vacuum, I would not go with this champion. Uh, okay. But given the champions I already have, I'm going to go with Mausoleum Mage. Uh, oh, take it. <laughs> take it? You, you hate, you're hating on Mausoleum Mage? I, I like him. I just don't need him. I've got too okay. much block uh, debuffs yeah. at the moment. <laughs> I don't even have, I only have like one increased defense champion. So I got increased yeah. defense, block debuffs, and a cleanse, and a heal, and turn meter fill, and a decreased speed on the A1. You almost forget, unless you look at him every day or so you use him every day, how good Mausoleum Mage really is. Very fast, too, 104 uh, for a support champion. Just really, really good. Going to help me almost everywhere. And he allows me, essentially, to run some champions a little bit shy and cheat on that crit rate if I'm going to be running him on a bunch of my teams, uh, which can be annoying in the early game. So I'm going to go. I'm going to stay safe, I feel like, and go Mausoleum Mage, even though I like a couple of the champions a little bit better. Who you got? Um, yeah, that's a great choice. Not one that I would have chose because I'm going for, drum roll please, Husk. Give me a Husk. Okay, I like it. I like <laughs> yeah. it. I like yeah, so it. 
Um, Husk was one of those champions where back in the day, I'm sure you can kind of resonate with this, that he was kind of the, he was looked upon as the worst max HP champion in comparison to Cold Hearts and Royal Guards and stuff like that. But then with the implementation of the Hydra boss, he just shot through the roof because mm -hmm. he's now got a provoke on the A1 to lock down Head of Decay. And also we've got the reduction of damage on like stage 21 to 25 and also on the Hydra heads. Like you can't deal like a certain max HP. So he actually started to become a lot more valuable since those higher stages. And that's why I love the despair ability in this game. And yeah, yeah, I just love this dude. And he's so tanky, right? Being a HP based champion. So do you run him in reflex and shut off the A3 or do you put him in like savage? Like what, how are you running this guy? What's your favorite build? Um, I, run him in re I run him in reflex. What? what did I say that in the beginning or what did I say? Uh, what did you say? I don't know. What did I say? <laughs> I, I think I you said you run him. I thought you said you run him in relentless. I think oh, that's what I you said. said. Oh, I meant reflex. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> okay, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. That's what. I, that's how I run him too. But since yeah. I already have Royal Guard, I'm not mad that you chose that pick because I'm gonna go right over to Vogoth. Uh, oh no! Yeah, no. <laughs> I was worried that you were gonna go Vogoth because yeah. I think that like, but you have Vrask and you have a lot of healers. I don't really on my selection. It's so true. But, I think that yeah. Vogoth is a perfect fit for the team. Now I'm starting to feel really good about my squad. Uh, uh, you can use this guy obviously from Bombol to Nether Spider to every. It feels like every boss out there in the game. You can go use him on a second, a go second arena team. He's gonna be so important for my account. I'm so happy, and he can bring control with a provoke as well on the a2 so overall super super happy about vogoth man what have you done to me man um <laughs> i had a weak start bro but hey i'm leaving you a couple good ones on the board here we got some good ones here i think yeah. if i was to choose anybody from here it would be a seeker to yeah. enable my two to one two to one comps because you stole deacon earlier so now i gotta <laughs> take a seeker to make up the extra 10 right dude now so, we both got really good teams man i'm feeling good about yeah. this <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we got the extra turns and the filling of 10 meters right making this one of the best champions and one of the most one well, of the best champions for the clan boss right enabling those two to one comps like those demifer teams and stuff like that and he's one of those champions that everybody looks for in this game when they're building on killable comps also holds that value in like the arena and stuff yeah with the 10 meter fill as a second 10 meter booster so yeah totally agree man i would have went seeker as well okay next up is dark elves Ooh. Dark Elves, you're up first, man. Ooh. All right, Dark Ao. Dark Ao. I don't even have to think about it. Wow. Okay. 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 I know what you, I know what everybody's know. probably thinking, and you're probably gonna choose yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. This is my most used epic champion on my account in 2023. Honestly. Okay. Well, I love this we dude. just it's only ten it's only eleven days in, bro. <laughs> I know you're gonna do a funny <laughs> edit there. I just looked to the side, I'm gonna have some funny edit. There. But <laughs> no, I don't think I'm even gonna edit this video, so you're, we're all good. We're all good, man. Uh, for, it's too right, long. So, <laughs> go yeah, ahead. So, bas so basically the poisons on the dead and I love poison explosion. Yep, I always yep. go to poison explosion over a circom. Sure, now yep. he's one of those champions to pair with like an LNR rule where he Places on it, um, A1 ability, detonates them, leads through with the AoE, decrease attack and increasing of durations, followed by the poisons and poison sensitivity, making him so strong for the Ice Golem as well. And if you're looking for a poisoner, he's, I don't know, I just can't not include him as my number one. I love this dude, man. I love him as well, uh, but I'm very thrilled yes. to have Madam Saris, Madam to, my, Saris uh, to, yes. to all to my own because I can run her from day one to the end of time as my arena debuffer and even in other areas of the game as well. Uh, Midnight Ritual is just an ability that's better than really any legendary champion at doing exactly this for the arena, removing all buffs, placing two of the most important debuffs in the game, can steal debuffs, has great synergy with fear and shields and all this other stuff, but but primarily for the Midnight Ritual ability, I will be using Madam Ceres, Basher. Who else in the arena? I don't know. A couple other champions. But uh, really, really happy with that, even though I do love Dark Kale as well. Hugo, next. What have I done, man? I should have just said Madam Ceres. <laughs> ah, if you said um, Madam Ceres, I definitely would have went Dark Kale, if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> uh, so, uh, do you know what? I'm going to go with uh, Ray and Deco No, actually. Do I choose that? Because she's Doom Tower. I keep choosing Doom Tower champions like I can farm myself. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Scylla. Okay. I'm going to go Scylla. Okay. I feel like Scylla enabling all of the AoE abilities, decrease accuracy, decrease speed, making it so strong for the Spider's Lair to pair alongside my Mordecai. And I feel like I can make a really cool composition alongside that. So I'm going to slap her in a stun set. I'll be good to go for Spiders. So. I agree with that. I love that pick as well. Shoot. I don't really need Ryan the Conjurer now that I have Matt of Saris. <laughs> you might as well like. take it. Now you got the weekend as well. <laughs> I know, but, but, but I would have definitely went Silar as well. So that's tricky, man. I guess I'm going to go. 
Ah, the more I look, man, the more I do think that I'm going to go Ryan. I am. Yeah. Uh, I'll have both of them. A similar ability to Madame Saracis <laughs> and the sweeping dismissal, only we're placing a weaken instead of decreased attack and defense. It's also on a three-turn cooldown. And we have a revival as well. Uh, good as well for Hydra Clan boss, uh, Ryan, over Madame Saracis. So at least I have some versatility there as well. And uh, yeah, big, big fan of Ryan the Conjurer. Even though, to your point, I could farm her in Doom Tower, it would be a little while before I'm able to do that. So I can use her before that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, she's a great champion. I think she's a bit under um, underlooked by the community same, nowadays. Same. Um, but yeah. All right, here we go, man. Nice revenant. Woo! Man, this is a this is a this is a big faction, man. For Holy <laughs> crud, dude. Okay, I'm going first here. Not that it matters because everybody's good. Uh, not really, but there's like some really S tier champions here. I'm actually I, I might go with someone that you wouldn't even picked at all. But I'm okay. gonna go anyway. I'm gonna go with an oldie but goodie and miscreated monster. I think the miscreated okay. monster is just like so solid. Again, falls off a bit in the end game, which is why I don't really use him anymore. However, I remember using the hell out of this guy for so long, right? An amazing this lightning storm is gonna help me out in spider, obviously. It's gonna help me out in ice golem and the ally protect, the damage mitigation that he has in his kit, along with the control tanky uh with the fear and the control on the uh, passive. I think that Miss Creative Monster is still a stud of a champion, so he would be my first choice. Yeah, that's a great choice. Um, I remember when I was first when he first came out, I was so jealous that I couldn't get him, and then when I got him in the end, I was like, "Wow, this is so cool." He's a beast, uh, but there's also some really good choices. I'm curious on who you're gonna go with. Man, I'm, just, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Man, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> there's like to me, there's to me, there's like five really good. Chance. Yeah, I'm going to go with probably the one I feel like is the strongest here, and it's going to be Rector Draft. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I feel, wondering... I feel yeah. like if you don't have a Duchess, Rector Draft, the next best thing, right? Uh, yep. Being able to revive those allies. We've got the Resistance, by the way, on the passive, while you're under the Perfect Veil, which she does provide in her kit, alongside AoE heals, the A1 decrease attack, and a Resist Aura for Doom Tower. And I feel like if you've got a Rector Draft, my progression in Doom Tower will skyrocket, because she will pretty much bring everyone back so quickly. So... Yeah, I think Rector Drop holds a great value. I completely agree. I'm actually going to go with, as much as I love a few of these champions that I won't name, well, it doesn't matter for me anymore. As much as I, I love Thylessia and Skull Crown, uh, I think that the best choice by far for me is Doom Priest. Yes. Uh, I get Doom Priest on the account, and again, Bolster is still just such an amazing ability. I can basically use her... You know, clan boss, Hydra clan boss, and then every other boss <laughs> pretty much in the game that I need to cleanse uh, with the heal on there as well. Just a very, very simple passive with no cooldown, but incredibly effective to this day. She's a legacy champion who still got it. Also bringing increased attack is nice yeah. as well. So I'm going Dean Priest. Yeah, she's a great choice. I didn't want to take all of them, all of the passive healers. I left that one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Would you? Uh, have, well, who are you going to go next? Um, so uh, next up, I'm going to go for... Well, for anybody that's familiar with my channel, I'm just going to choose it for you guys. Skullground. Yeah. Um, I was memed about this champion for my whole years on YouTube, right? And then I finally pulled her, finally got her, and then boom, she's in the squad now. But nice. obviously, what's, what's really cool is it's like... If I was to choose for an arena nuka, it's that unkillable buff with the resilient. And yeah. I feel like that holds to such a high regard because if you build it with so much damage and you don't get stripped, which you're probably going to do with me anyway with the Madam Ceres, um, she's actually very, very strong. But it's also the speed in arena battles by 23%. And for an epic champion, definitely up there with one of the best in the game. So once I've got my Termite boosters that I've chosen, I've now got a speed aura to pair with that. Old Hermit Jork is about to have a field day. Yeah, so, you got Old Hermit, yeah. you got Seeker, you got Skull Crown, you got a nice little speed team going there, man. Yeah, uh, nice little speed squad. Yeah, hard to argue with Skull Crown for sure. Dwarf time, and you're up first. Oh. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> congratulations, because I think it. Oh, oh, who you got? Who you got here? Do you know what? Everybody knows what I'm going to say, but then I know what I, you're going to say. But, uh, but then I also remember something that you said earlier to me. I know... Uh, I know, I, I know that there's one right answer and you're not going to choose it. That's how much I know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go for Geomancer. No, first, you're not supposed first. to do it. You're not supposed to do it, bro. Come <laughs> on, man. I brought you onto this channel. There was only one rule. You have to pick Cornelia. That was the only do rule. Is. I know that for... you're not going to choose Cornelia next because you're going to go with someone else. So Shit, I'm, I might I, do it just to spite you now. Guys, for those of you who don't know, uh, YST is famous for and has like 18, maybe it's like 50 videos on Cornelia. You really just uh, 
strategize a whole new world of opportunities that you can take advantage of if you have Cornelia. So I thought for sure you would take Wait, her. Ash, do you remember when I came on your channel to speak about Cornelia? I do. You've been so on every I, channel, I, bro. You've been yeah. going around. You've been making your rounds. Every YouTuber. Dude, dude, did you see that we actually managed to make it work on Floor 90 now? No, I didn't see. Yeah, it was like last month we managed to make it work. So that was kind of the more recent videos. Okay. But it, was, it, right. it took me, since our collaboration, I've been trying since then. Who did you collab on that one with? Um, it was, well, I did it with Hades for that. No, I did oh, it on my own channel. So you saved the good comps for Hades' channel. No, I no, no. see how it is. <laughs> I see how it is. We'll give Ash the 150 <laughs> subscriber comps and we'll give Hades the 180 oh. subscriber. Okay, okay. Uh, no, all well, to be aside, fair, it wasn't, to, to be fair, like, with, with that one, it was for my own channel, but then we spoke about all the strategies for Cornelia on Hades' channel. Oh, so it wasn't just, so it was just for my bro. channel, technically. I'm just busting your chops, bro. <laughs> uh, I love, no, but it, okay. Congratulations. Yeah. You have, in my opinion, the best epic in Rage Shadow Legends and Geomancer. Uh, congrats. Yes, so uh, Geomancer, the boss slayer, and now I'm going to be able to beat Ash in every single boss. <laughs> it's talk true. About, <laughs> talk about Hydra, talk about semi manipulation, talk about A1 decreased accuracy. One of the best boss slayers in this game. And there's no arguments about it. Like, talk about anywhere, right? This champion is so useful. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. So, Geomancer, the best. I would trade, like, half my champions for Geomancer. Uh, <laughs> listen, man. Because I did get Maneater, I'm just going to uh -huh. spite you and get Cornelia. I oh, want no. Cornelia on no. my squad. <laughs> I it's can't least, believe it. It's the least I can do, man. You took freaking Geo, dude. Uh, I was really counting on you to pass up Geo to me, but that would you be a dumb what? move. You know what? You're the first person to ever take Cornelia away from me. Well, you know what? If you loved her that much, you should have went for her, man. Shouldn't have left her for the other guys to pick up. Uh, oh, so listen. Oh, no. Yeah, Cornelia, for all the reasons that YST loves her, I can solo anything now in the game with Cornelia. Uh, seriously, why not? I, I want to hand the mic back to you here. Obviously, I could describe why I love Cornelia, but you are the master of Cornelia. Why is she so special? All right, so I'm going to break down Ash's champion for him. Thank you. So ba basically, Revitalizing Rest, one of the most unique abilities being on a two-turn cooldown, practically a one-turn once you get woken up, because it heals the ally by 100% and fills the turn meter um, when they're under that sleep debuff, and you lose it due to taking damage from an enemy. Now, for anybody that's not aware, you can solo Bommel, you can solo the Griffin, you can solo Scarab King. Now, it does take long durations to do so, but by switching up a gear set, you can easily do this. Um, also, one of the best champions in the game for the Faction Wars, being able to tank those hits if you don't have ally protection, like a rearguard sergeant, because that boss ignores your defense, you get woken up, and then boom, you're back into the fight. Yep. Um, also, Revitalizing Rest, making it one of the best substitutes for Kaima, being an AoE sleep that just places, that can be swapped with a Fear Right if it gets removed or stolen and stuff. So, yep. very strong passive effect there, and a speed aura. So. Yeah, even for, even all jokes aside, even just in the beginning, before I'm even, even able to worry about those bosses in the game, I, I'll use her as a, in a similar way to Kaimar as a CC. Well, I have Basher too, but either way, I can double it up with a piece of the deep. So yeah, I don't yeah. Uh, regret that. Who who you got next? Um, I'm going to go with, oh my God, <laughs> in my head, I'm still going to say Cornelia. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Gala Longbraids. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so Gala Longbraids is probably one of the most underrated Lucas in this game and we're seeing a lot of her recently that I've been seeing with the implementation of the bolster set because of the way that she works with the sheer swagger and attacks one enemy three times, each hit will ignore 25% of the target's defense, grants an extra turn if this champion has full HP, but also on the A2 attacks one enemy and ignores 50% of the target's defense when attacking whilst under that shield buff, which is where you want to use the bolster, right, um, to kind of yep. get that full value there. So, and because she's ignoring so much defense and you get that extra turn, you're going one, two, three, targeting those Rotos, right? And it's passive. Then leading in again with a 50% ignore defense to kill somebody else like a Duchess. And I just feel like it's got so much one-shot capabilities and so underrated for a single target nuka. So, yeah. Totally agree with you, man. Totally agree with you. I love Melga. Uh, I love Runekeeper mm -hmm. Dazdirk. I think he's really, really Great champion. good. Super underrated. But I'm actually going to go to Mitha, so... Uh, yeah. So I think that you can't pass up on Demitha. Increased yeah. duration of all buffs. I don't have a buff extender yet, so I have that. I have one now. Uh, also with the heal, she's a decent healer as well. She has block damage and continuous heal on a three-turn cooldown. Really, uh, obviously Void Affinity. She's known for block damage on killable teams, but really I can use her absolutely everywhere as a support champion. Uh, she's going to be tremendous. So Demitha is my choice. Moving choice. on to Shadow Kin, my friend. Ooh, and, you get the first one here. Yeah. You know what? 
I don't have an amazing arena nuclear. You have Magnar, but I don't have one yet. So without even reviewing everybody too hard, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going to go Genbo the Dishonor, man. Uh, I feel like he's going to be a perfect final, you know, piece to my puzzle, uh, so to speak. He's got the self buffs with the extra turn, comes in heartless bliss, kills everybody, uh, decreasing duration of bus, but it cannot be resisted on critical hits, which is really, really nice to have. And then of course he's immune to decrease attack. He cannot be mitigated his damage and he's going to ignore unkillables if they're under increased attack. So your skull crown, if you're setting her up with an old hermit, I'm not scared, man. Okay, I'm not out. scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who no, you got, man? Who you got? Great champion. Actually, he's Gimbo for a long time, but yeah, really cool, man. Um, for me, I'm going to go with... Uh, my first one is mm -hmm. going to be Turogida Frog. Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't go there. Okay. Yeah, so Turogida Frog faith. being one of the being one of the best clan boss champions in the game, right? Yeah. You can't mention that Bog Blessing with the ally protection and the shields in the same ability. Um, we've got the AoE Provokes for the other places in this game. We're reflecting poisons with a passive. We've got an A1 drop attack. There's just so much versatility in this kit, whether that be clan boss or PvE content. So holds so much value in this game. Definitely up there. I completely agree. It was definitely the other champion I would have went with. I will go with... I feel like I already have a lot of support on my squad. I don't really have a good option for... I have a lure for Fire Knight. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm trying to think of... like Because I was thinking about maybe going with going a little bit crazy with Fenshi for Fire Knight. That's, that's actually a really good choice if you want yeah. to. Yeah, but I love Hatatsu. You know what? I'm going to go Fenshi. I would go Hatatsu in a vacuum, right? But I already have a lot. Of, actually... I have a Giz card. I have a, lot of, I have a lot of support already, you know? Yeah. What are you going to say? I was going to say, I'm actually happy you mentioned Hatatsu. I think you're one of the first people that liked him like me. I'm yeah. a big fan of him. Yeah, 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 he's a beast. Are you going to go with him next? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll be quick. There's multiple hitters everywhere. Uh, turn meter control. This guy is going to be a Fire Knight specialist for my team because I feel like I need to get that shield down to make to set up a lure. And now I can basically handle any Fire Knight now that I have Fenshi on my squad. Hatatsu, really quick. Beast of a champion. Defense all battles. AoE decrease attack. Increase defense and continuous heal. Three turn cooldown. There you go. All right. <laughs> Very strong. Hey, really quick. Yeah, who all are you right. going to go with, man? Can you, can you guess by what I'm wearing? That's not you Genzin, by the way. You can't go Genzin, bro! No, not, not Genzin. There's somebody else. There's uh, somebody else there. Sashi. No. Dude, she has exactly that. What, what the fuck? Uh, Click on Nagorio. Nagorio. Okay. Uh, Nagorio. Nagorio. Wait, 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 oh, okay. All right. There we go. Jeez. So, okay. Nagorio, like, I love this mask. Like, he's my next favorite one after Genzin. And okay. he actually smacks very hard. Like, it's, like, really up there for an epic champion. But obviously, the only downside is you don't get that extra turn mechanic, like a uh, Genbo that is dishonored. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so basically, what he does is attacks all enemies, decreases the cooldown of the skill by one turn when attacking whilst under an increased attack, effectively making this a free turn cooldown. Attacks one enemy, places the block buffs, and if this champion is under increased attack, um, steals all buffs from the target. And then an A1 that can place, or under increased attack, can place a block active skills. But on his passive with the Murderer's Lust, places that 50% increase attack buff on this champion for two turns whenever an HP level is dropped below 50% or 30%. So very strong for Faction Wars, but at faster than the eye, hits a lot harder than people think. So, okay. def so definitely try it out if you haven't already. It's really awesome. Cool. I've never tried him out. He Wasn't he a, uh, a, a Fragment Summon or something? He was. He, okay. was a frag yeah. he was a Fragment Fusion before the... What's his name? The Hosker rule came out. Okay. But an honorable mention for me, like yeah. you were saying, with the thing would actually be a Soy Ren. I would have chosen her. Okay. Um, Soy, Soy Ren is right underneath Nagorio. Yep. Now, this champion has um, drop defense, weaken, and poisons in one skill set, guys. Now, talk about like a Fane 2.0, right? So, very, very strong in this game. Love that. Okay, here we go. Uh, also, isn't Taya really good, too? Uh, Taya is pretty, she's pretty solid, yeah, but I haven't personally used too much of her. Yeah, she has instant activation, though. Instant activation. Yeah. All right. All right. Next up is Sylvan Watchers. Well, there's only Wait. six of them. What? I go first here. I know that. I know. Sure. <laughs> go ahead, bro. Take take the obvious choice. Maybe Why try Nia? Why try Nia? Okay. Okay. I think that was the obvious choice. However, yeah. there's, some good, there's some good backups. Okay. There is some good ones. But of course, it's going to come down to that A2, right? Being able to remove all debuffs from a target ally, then heals them by 40%, and then puts their skills on cooldowns by two turns, making this one of the best champions in the game for Hydra Boss, right? Yep. You're able to, like, consistently, if you put her in Relentless, you're just going to keep on resetting the cooldowns of Geomancer, putting the burns up on everybody. So it's very, very cool. And you can use it on, like, Revive Champions. You can use it on Husk. Like, it's so versatile. Yeah. Also... 
The A1 is basically the same as Chris, who's a Void Legendary Champion, with having an AoE Decrease Speed, which is so strong as a Void Epic, right? Um, making this one of the best ones in the game. Also, Bark Flesh, Ally Protection, and a Strengthen on all That's allies. Three. Yeah. Talk. It's just crazy, man. Like, it blows my mind that this is an epic champion in this game. And whenever this champion is healed, heals each ally except this champion by 20% of that heal, also making her a very valuable healer. Dude. So. It's incredible. Cool. She's a really, really good and underrated champion. I haven't done a guide on her. Have you? Um, yes, I did one with uh, Nub Raids before, yeah. Okay. Check it out, guys. We'll link it. Uh, okay. I'm going to go with. It's between, for me, Ruella and Mist Rider Dathi. I'm going to go Dathi or Dathi. Okay. Di Di I'm going to go Mist Rider. <laughs> yeah. I think in Irish it actually means, oh, I don't want to mess this up. I think Nub was telling me it's David or Dave. Is that is how is that? Dahi. Oh, it's pronounced okay. Dahi. Dahi. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Mist Rider Dahi, whatever you call him, he's really good. He's got a, an extra turn ability, but he's placing increased attack and increased accuracy on himself. The increased accuracy especially, really cool. Grant extra turn, comes in with the AoE decreased defense, and extra turn again if it's placed on all enemies. So you're getting the, you're getting the, the buffs with the increased accuracy helping you to place the decreased defense on all enemies. Extra turn if you're lucky enough to land on all enemies. The only downside to his kit is a four turn cooldown, but with the extra turn guaranteed on the A3 and a chance of it on the A2, it's really, it could be like a deke type situation going on where you bring it all the way down to two and then uh, what a remove a random buff and another 20% chance of granting an extra turn on the A1. So this guy is just like a machine. He keeps going and he's, is he the only decreased defense champion in Sylvan Watchers right now? Uh, is it? I think it might not be... We've got um, Ruella, who does it on... Uh, attacks one enemy three times, but not AoE. Yeah, one, yeah so AoE decreased yeah. defense. Like, he's the yeah. he's the only dude right now. So, I'm a big fan. Actually, haven't looked at... Oh, yeah, she's just a burn. Okay, so there we go. Who, who are you going to go with, man? <laughs> let's, not, let's not talk about Sisha. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. going to take you 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forget it. Um, so, uh, Ruella, I'm going to go with okay. uh, for this one. Now, okay. Rowena for Finite, of course, we've got yep. uh, Drop Defense, we've got Weaken, Decrease Speed, we've got Filling of Turn Meters, and also, um, on each critical hit, has a chance of stealing Turn Meter, so up to 15% uh, of steal. So, really cool champion to pair with my, what's his name, from the other faction that I chose. For, what, um, what, from, from, who, from what? Skimfoss. Um, oh, Skimfoss. Okay. From yeah, my okay, finite yeah. team, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I misplayed this. I should have passed on uh, Fenchi and went with Relic since I had first pick instead. Yeah. But anyway, uh, or I didn't have first pick, but I had, but you were going to go with Naya, obviously. The last but not least, guys, I guess I'll go with, I guess I'll go with Dude in the Runic. He's got okay. the, uh, he's got the AoE, he's got the shield, increase the duration of ally buffs again, valuable ability, albeit on a four turn cooldown, I don't like that at all. Uh, but he has taunt, so, you know, if there's ever a use for taunt in this game, other than a little <laughs> bit, a little bit of help with progression, uh, yeah. you know what, honestly, with the taunt and the strength and counterattack on himself, I think he'll be good in the early game for me, so I'm actually okay yeah. with this choice, uh, and that concludes our draft of every epic champion, our favorite epic <laughs> champions. Guys, let us know what you think of this format, like drafting champions versus just having someone come on and like picking uh, their favorite champions. In a, in a, I really enjoyed this, pretending like we had a team, uh, yeah. YST. Now let's go ahead and do the same uh, with legendaries. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this is actually a very fun video. I've not... Yeah done one like this before so it was actually a really cool take and refreshing for me as well and obviously to do it with you was a lot of fun so i appreciate Great, it man. man always enjoy having you on let's not make it another eight months until the next time uh thanks for joining me <laughs> yeah. and you can check out yst's all his information along with those canelia guides in the show notes <laughs> below uh thank you for watching guys and as always take care